the next game I wanted to mention for 2009 is uh, Daikatana. Now, this is a really infamous title for anyone who's played PC games in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, it was developed by Ion Storm and it's made in 2000. Uh, the developer was John Romero of Quake and Doom fame, and this was supposed to be his big breakout title. Uh, There's a big advertising campaign behind it, and it was delayed a lot. And when it finally got released, it met for, with really poor reviews and a lot of frustrated players. Uh, the part of Daikatana that really stood out to me, though, was uh, at some points in the game, you had to steer around uh, AI characters that you worked with. And AI wasn't always very intuitive. A lot of times it'd run into walls or just stand around. And there's more babysitting and less of them helping you. And what this became most prevalent was in doorways. Uh, when a character stood in the doorway as the door was closing, he'd take damage. And in one particular instance, my AI character had actually stood underneath the door. The door came down on him and killed him, ending the mission and causing me to have to restart the whole level. And while this isn't necessarily a good moment, it certainly is memorable because, you know, there's tension going on with me fighting the enemies, trying to find new weapons and exploring. And if you forget about the little kid running around the level, he can get himself killed. And it's just this kind of anticlimactic slam into a wall and a reminder of why games need to be tested and what makes good game design and why advertisement campaigns on their own can't make for a quality title. John Romero's going to make you his bitch. Yeah. I think that yes, really summarizes it. Uh, that term is going to be synonymous. <laughs> the next one on my list is The Witcher uh, Enhanced Edition by CD Projekt. Um, original release was 2007. Enhanced Edition was out in 2008. Uh, Witcher is probably one of the best RPGs I've played in a very long time. It is a very impressive and deep game that has amazing story, combat, and overall is just a very fun game to play and has some very interesting features to this. More specifically, the sex cards. <laughs> there is a collection of cards that you basically go around in every town and the hot for? attractive women in there, Undress. you usually yes. can find some I way of banging. <laughs> first, I must know if those so you would just collect these cards throughout the game? <laughs> yeah, so you just As go you up to in. some lady and either so. you had to acquire an item, you had to talk to them Patience. right, or yes, some instance fly. allowed you to go Maybe ahead and unlock a sex scene. <laughs> However, there's just one sex scene that just was a little bizarre, and that's with the vampires. Everything is really awesome, it's kind of cute and stuff, and then you have sex with something that kind of looks like Gollum. <laughs> yeah, like, that was something a little bit more traumatizing out of this game. <laughs> not gonna lie, when you talked about getting those cards, the first thing that came to my mind was you gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. I kind of feel bad about my next choice uh, because I didn't play the full game. I played the demo, but I think I said something about the game. The demo was good enough that I maybe put it on the list. Uh, I'm talking about Torchlight, made by Runic Games in 2009. Uh, it's essentially a Diablo clone uh, with a very cel shaded, cartoony visual style thrown into it. I downloaded the demo for Steam when it came out. I had heard about it and I was kind of skeptical because there wasn't a multiplayer, it was a single player only game. But after I sat down and played with it, I found out that it was a really strong single player title. Uh, in particular, you know, there's a variety of weapons, the characters were interesting to look at, uh, the environments were vibrant, and just anything they could do to polish up this essentially single player title that could have been multiplayer, they did, and it sold the show for me. Uh, in particular, one thing I really enjoyed about it were the weapons you can get for the uh, magic character in the game. Uh, you could dual wield weapons, and at one point in the game I'd actually dual wielded stabs that threw projectiles. And so I was walking around just mashing gobs of enemies with projectiles from my stabs, and then occasionally throwing a spell on my own that would annihilate dozens of enemies. And just this very kind of brutal, you know, fist on face action. It really was satisfying. Yeah, Torchlight is definitely a really great callback to the whole Diablo 2. Um, and it really has a good feeling to it, and it really just, while it lacks multiplayer, it makes up in being just a lot more refined Diablo 2. Yeah, it's kind of like, if you wanted uh, a modern example of previous game design innovation, uh, Torchlight's it. It's kind of, you know, holding a light up to what might have been a forgotten means of doing an RPG on PC. My next one on this list is Unreal Tournament 3. Now, this game came out in 2007, and honestly, was pretty shitty. 
<laughs> it really went ahead and disappointed me and probably a lot of people. It just came out and didn't feel like it was a polished title. I was pretty disappointed. A year and a half later, finally has it's up to a level of playability that I really enjoyed. They fixed up a good amount of it, and now it has a few new features. Um, one of them notably being Titan and Greed. Titan is a really cool mob they added to it that basically allows you to, after killing and getting points, you finally get unlock a uh, ability to go ahead and turn into a giant titan, which makes you into a like ten foot tall monster that has a rocket launcher and a shock rifle. <laughs> and you go around and you just clobber everything on the fucking map. And it is just so fun to play. It is totally broken and totally disbalances the game, but you know, it is just hilariously fun to play. The final game on my list was a game made in 2009 by Namco called Nobi Nobi Boy. Uh, this is more of an experimental title developed for the PlayStation Network. Uh, and what really stood out to me, what puts it on this list, isn't any specific moment, but just the fact that it's such a bizarre game to be put out in mainstream. Uh, I'd played a few ti independent titles down on the PC, and they did varying levels of experimentation with game design, but this game really just kind of went all out, and to come from a big developer really surprised me. Uh, you essentially play the role of this little worm that you can stretch and crunch up using your uh, analog sticks. And the whole goal is to eat characters in this 3D environment, float and fly around, and then uh, take whatever you've eaten or whatever points you've gained, fly up to the top of the level, and give them to some celestial being called Girl. And it extends her length, and she tries to travel through the solar system. It's a really kind of spacey, stoner story that makes no sense, but just a goofy little sandbox to play around. you got these really kind of abstracted cartoony looking characters on bikes and aliens floating around and you can eat them and throw things at them and the whole thing's physics driven so you can trip over people and knock things over and it's just a really fun goofy sandbox and I loved it this is one of those games that I have to say is pretty fucking bizarre <laughs> I don't really know how to even say this because you eat people and then you could poop them out yeah. If I remember right. You can yeah. just poop them out and they just go everywhere. It is just absolutely mind-boggling how this could be a game made by anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I saw a trailer for it online and I just bought it out of curiosity. And I think that's a huge selling point for it. If you can make something so bizarre that you don't even need to explain yourself, you just kind of show it for what it is and let your curiosity make the purchase, you might have something. Alright, the last one on my list is Soldner X, uh, which was released on the PS3 uh, December 2008 by SideQuest Studios. I really enjoy the uh, whole top-down shooter genre, and this is just one of those games that came out. I never heard of it until I just randomly seen it on the PSN network, and I downloaded it immediately because it's just an amazingly fun game. It graphically is amazing. It has just really fun gameplays. It's got a good mix of like classical gameplay with a little fun combo system. Um, and it has lots of fun worlds. And the game's hard as hell. <laughs> Once again, it's another game that really kind of gets your balls to the wall. And more specifically for the Asteroid Belt, it is just nothing but utter mayhem. You are just blowing through like this whole maze of asteroids right on the seat of your pants trying to blow them up before they get to your ship and there is just no possible way that you could just kind of guide it through without blowing shit up so you're just literally like carving a path through <laughs> the asteroids on this and it's just so such an a general us. now i had played that part of the game and i i mean i have to agree completely it's just a mess of objects on the screen and i guess a lot like what can happen with uh games like uh serious sam you're no longer aiming. You're essentially, you see this big mass of stuff coming at you, and you just shoot wildly and do everything you can to get stuff out of your way. And especially with the fact that some of the asteroids kind of blow up and go in different directions, I thought really added to the chaos. It added unpredictability. Yeah, it is just a totally frantic moment, and it overall just comes off as being a very nice, polished game. Well, uh, that was Dan and I's list for 2009. Uh, again, understandably, there's a lot of games that came out in 2009 that we simply hadn't played, so didn't make this list. Uh, all the same, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope maybe you got some insight into the games that are out there, both new and old. Uh, and have a happy holiday, and thanks for visiting, and make sure to read some more of our articles.